the vertebrae, the pelvis, and the two femurs. We'll look at the pelvis by itself. The pelvis is made up of the two hip bones, or innominate bones, and the sacrum. The fibrous joints which unite them, the two sacroiliac joints behind, and the pubic symphysis in front, permit almost no movement. We look at the right hip bone by itself. The hip bone is formed by the fusion of three bones, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. The names of these bones give rise to the names of the various features of the hip bone. Let's look at these features. This broad bony plate is the wing or ala of the ilium. Its broad roughened edge is the iliac crest, an area where many important muscles attach. The iliac crest ends in front at the anterior superior iliac spine and behind at the posterior superior iliac spine. This is the ischial spine with the greater sciatic notch above it and the lesser sciatic notch below it. This is the ischial tuberosity. The ischial tuberosity is another area where many muscles attach. It's also the part of the hip bone that we sit on. The socket for the hip joint is called the acetabulum. This broad, smooth area is the articular surface. We'll see it again in a minute with the articular cartilage intact. The big hole in the lower part of the hip bone is the obturator foramen. This is the body of the pubis. This is the superior ramus of the pubis. And this is the ischiopubic ramus. This prominence is the pubic tubercle to which the inguinal ligament is attached. So when we look at the hip bone from in front, like this, we see the inner aspect of the ilium and the outer aspect of the pubis and ischium. Now that we've looked at the hip bone, let's bring the sacrum back into the picture. We're looking at the bones as they'd be in the upright standing position. And it's perhaps surprising to see the angle at which the sacrum lies. Its pelvic surface is more nearly horizontal than vertical. The sacrum is attached to the hip bone not only by the sacroiliac joint, seen here from behind, but also by two big ligaments, one going to the ischial spine and one going to the ischial tuberosity, as we'll see in a minute. Now let's add the femur to the picture. The femur is the longest bone in the body. We'll be looking at its distal end in the next section. For now, let's look at the features of the proximal end. This is the head of the femur. This is the neck. Since the head is wide and the neck is narrow, the head of the femur can go a long way in this axis and in this axis before bone hits bone. This prominent lump is the greater trochanter, and this one is the lesser trochanter. The greater and lesser trochanters are important muscle insertions. This line, the intertrochanteric line, marks the insertion of a major ligament of the hip joint, which we'll see in a minute. On the back of the femur, this prominent ridge, the intertrochanteric crest, runs from the greater to the lesser trochanter. This broad rough area is the gluteal tuberosity. This rough line running down the shaft of the femur is the linear aspera. Many muscles have their origins or their insertions on the linear aspera, on the gluteal tuberosity, and in this hollow in front of the intertrochanteric crest. Now that we've looked at the dry bones, let's see how they look in the living body. The big gap between the sacrum and the ischium is bridged by two massive ligaments. The sacrospinous ligament goes to the ischial spine. The sacrotuberous ligament goes to the ischial tuberosity. Let's go around to the front and see those two ligaments from the inside. Here's the sacrospinous ligament. Here's the sacrotuberous ligament. These two openings are the lesser sciatic foramen and the greater sciatic foramen. 
the sciatic nerve passes through the greater sciatic foramen. The obturator foramen is largely closed by the obturator membrane. The obturator nerve and vessels pass through a small tunnel here. Now let's take a look at the hip joint. We'll remove the femur for a moment and look at the acetabulum. Here's the broad C-shaped articular surface, sometimes called the lunate surface. This non-articular part of the acetabulum is the acetabular fossa. Around the edge of the bony acetabulum, this rim of fibrocartilage, the acetabular labrum, adds to the depth of the acetabulum. This is the cut end of the ligament of the head of the femur. Its other end is attached here on the center of the femoral head. Now let's go back to the intact hip joint. The capsule of the hip joint is a sleeve of ligaments. The capsule is thin on the underside. Everywhere else, it's thick and very strong. This part of the capsule behind is called the ischiofemoral ligament. This anterior part of the capsule, which is the thickest, is known as the iliofemoral ligament. The fibers of these capsular ligaments become tight when the joint is extended. The capsule is attached to the hip bone all the way around the acetabular labrum. On the back of the femur, the capsule is attached part way along the femoral neck. On the front of the femur, the capsule is attached out here on the intertrochanteric line. Now let's take a look at the various different movements that occur at the hip joint. Movement can occur in three different axes. Forward movement is flexion. Backward movement is extension. Movement out to the side is abduction. Movement toward or across the midline is adduction. Lastly, rotation. Rotation outward is lateral rotation. Rotation inward is medial rotation. Rotation at the hip joint is accompanied by marked backward and forward movement of the greater and lesser trochanter. Here's the wing of the ilium, the iliac crest, the anterior superior iliac spine, the posterior superior iliac spine, the ischial spine, the ischial tuberosity, the acetabulum, the obturator foramen, the body of the pubis, the superior pubic ramus, the ischiopubic ramus, and the pubic tubercle. On the femur, here is the head, the neck, the greater trochanter, the lesser trochanter, the intertrochanteric line, the intertrochanteric crest, the gluteal tuberosity, and the linear aspera. Here are the sacrospinous ligament, the sacrotuberous ligament, the ischiofemoral ligament, the iliofemoral ligament, and the obturator membrane.